For more on the Republican Party choosing its presidential candidate, we welcome Hel Eleanor Clift. She's a political col columnist with the Daily Be Beast. Eleanor, good to see you again. Good to see you. We've been talking a lot about Trump, but we're not quite there yet. Do you think that Nikki Haley can really eke out a win here in New Hampshire? And does it really matter if Trump seems like he is going to be the clear winner everywhere else? Well, she's working very hard, but she's got a big gap to close. Uh, he, at some of the early pollings, he was 30 and 40 points ahead of her. She's probably cut that in at least half, but she still seems, if you believe the polls, she seems on track to lose uh, in uh, New Hampshire. So it's very hard then for her to get a springboard into the next state, which happens to be her home state. But again, these are only Republican primary voters. And Nikki Haley's appeal is broader than that. She appeals to independents, to uh, Democrats who are willing to cross party lines. Uh, and I think she would probably do well in a general election. But in a uh, Republican primary, winner take all, most of these states are, where the winner, even if it's a narrow win, gets all the delegates. It's hard to see that she's going to pull this off. If she does, it'll be a, a, a major uh, upset, and mm. I, don't, I don't see that coming. Let's say she has an opportunity to pull this off. If she does become a front runner against Trump, what chances does she have in harnessing some of those disenfranchised Biden voters? Do you think that she has more opportunity to take over those more moderate Democrats? And maybe does being a woman of colour help her, or does um, it even hinder her? Yeah, yeah I, I think both those things are helpful. Her appeal to moderates and to Democrats and her, uh, her, ethnicity, her ethnicity, which in a multicultural, increasingly multicultural country, is an asset. But uh, those are all assets in the general election, in the Republican primary electorate. It's basically been, it's very constrained. They, other people can't vote. And uh, the Republican winner, even if it's Donald Trump, even if he wins by a few points, it's likely to get all the delegates. Now, I think the test will be if she gets enough support that and has enough money uh, from the considerable groups that are backing her, if she can just stay in the race, even if she's not overtaking him, because there is this uh, belief or concern that uh, Trump, because of his many legal challenges, uh, that he might not be able to mm. uh, sustain the race until the end, that he might get convicted or they might, he might get to the uh, Republican convention and delegates will suddenly be reading polls where he's not doing well and they'll have buyer's remorse. Again, I think this is mostly fantasy, mm. but I think that would be the logic if Nikki Haley does well enough, even if she doesn't. So that's one of the external Trump factors. To, to stay in the race. That's one of the external factors that we were hearing about from the HEAT program there. If President uh, Trump, former President Trump, is in prison, then you're saying that Nikki Haley might have a chance? <laughs> yes, but you know, the way our legal system works, even if uh, these jury trials proceed to a conclusion uh, before the convention in the summer or before the election, uh, he can always appeal, mm. and appeals go on for months. So I, I wouldn't put a lot of money on there being decisive decisions that imperil his freedom uh, before mm. uh, the election. I, I, don't, I don't see that. And yet it's a powerful incentive for Donald Trump to, to win because he can then pardon himself and uh, make a lot of these um, federal cases go away. And what about so, Ron DeSantis? Is his campaign effectively over or can he stumble on after South Carolina? Uh, he, I think his rationale for staying in the race, again, is if, if Donald Trump somehow stumbles or implodes that uh, a Republican primary electorate would more likely turn to him than they would to Nikki Haley. They're both there kind of as backup candidates, mm. it seems to me. You know, should the world fall apart for Donald Trump, here are two other uh, plausible alternatives who, by the way, might do better in a general election than Donald Trump, who in the two uh, presidential races he, he ran, he lost the popular vote by three million in uh, in uh, 2016 and by 7 million in 2020. He did eke out an electoral college win in 20, 
16 and wasn't able to do that in 2020. But the way our electoral college system is set up, it's really a handful of battleground states that make the decision. And uh, Donald Trump is pretty popular in some of those Midwestern uh, battleground states. So we've got a very close election uh, coming up we do. here, whichever way it swings in the end. All right. Eleanor Clift, thank you for your time. Political columnist with The Daily Beast. Thank you.